All right, I I think we're live now. Okay, welcome everyone. Tonight, like many nights, no plan. We're just jumping into it. We're gonna start with a new fill layer. We want to go dark. We want to go light. Let's go dark. Going dark tonight. And um, we're gonna do a new paint layer here uh, I don't really have any reference pulled up I've got some ideas um, I just I kind of wanted to get into um, just more uh, kind of basic shapes you know, play with um, different forms Turtle guy. So maybe we play with how this this turtle could be. Designed. So I'm gonna go with a couple different shapes for these shells, you know. That there's a general shape that you know you kinda want for a turtle shell. But um What if we subvert those expectations and we do something else? You want to go way out there with those feet, with those legs. There we go. I think it's fun sometimes to. Uh, Take a, a kind of a known shape or a known uh, entity, like a uh, like a turtle, for example, and then just play with doing it in a completely different way. You know, completely different form language. do find myself doing kind of the same thing there so let's let's uh, play with that you know this actually this reminds me of these this couple of uh, pages of sketches that I had in my sketchbook where um, I'm taking you know the basic structure and then uh, really pushing some of the um, some of the elements a bit farther so that it almost becomes like the antithesis, right? So we're gonna play with that a little bit here. So I suppose we've got this guy here. We'll start to give these a little bit of. Uh, value structure this almost looks like a puppy or a rabbit or something but we shall play with it Right, so subverting those expectations. Maybe having this really long, long-legged turtle here. This is an idea I've played with before, so... Um, it should be more refined than it is, but... Uh, you may have seen it before, that's all I'm really getting at there. It's not completely... Completely shooting from the hip on this. I 
let's see, this guy. Hmm. Maybe if we, so I think we can, you know, echo some of these things. So you get this shape, and then we maybe just echo that here. Or you can um, you know, draw these correlations, right? So maybe we cut this out here. feet out a little bit. Uh, let's see. Give this a little more uh, structure to it. More structure. What in the world is this guy talking about? All right, we're gonna separate these. They're too big to begin with. We're working on this huge file. These do not need to be as big as they are. But felt the necessity to fill the page. I like that one. We'll keep that one larger. This one definitely has problems. You got problems there, buddy. I'll deal with you later. If at all. I think what we need is a harder brush. So, how about we go with um, either the natural drag, that's a nice one for what I'm thinking, or the uh, sinful onion number one. We'll go with the sinful onion. All right, so what we're basically doing with this, since we're working in light and dark, I'm actually gonna go a little bit um, uh, darker on my light value, and I guess we'll just leave we're going to leave the black as black. Um, so what I want to do here is just block in um, where I think light would hit this form. Now there's more drawing that we have to do. You know, we're not, we're not married to these forms. So we're allowed to, uh, to adjust them. This would be a very wide base. I actually think we should keep these legs kind of close underneath. So he's more like, I want to say turtled up. Sorry, everybody. But uh, that's, that's the phrase that makes sense to me right now. He's got to be like, stable, you know, like not super wide, but kind of this uh, stable like a table kind of thing. Everything just seems to fall into a logical uh, you know, kind of solid four corners, whereas some of these other poses might be more, um, a little more dynamic, maybe, we'll see. Turtles, though, why? You know, I 
offer no explanation. I think these, what I'm really not liking about this guy, I'm just going to get rid of those legs, um, is that the, there's no real kind of cohesive flow about those, right? I want them to um, kind of feel like they're kind of naturally um, you know, connected to this, this form up here. idea with this was to make these kind of elegant long-legged turtles that don't feel like turtles at all there's got to be a turtle person out there he's gonna find this video and go actually there is a species Turtlicus elongatus. It's just kind of like a tall old turtle. Okay. Block in some little shadow shapes there. This little puppy turtle over here. I don't know what's gonna happen with you. Something's gonna happen. Might have to start pulling some reference. So a turtle, I think one of the main things that I don't really understand about a turtle, or rather that I would need reference for, is the crest of the head here. There's different kind of snouts, right? Like seen some that kind of have like a, a beak almost right and a lot of animals you can kind of block in the eye with a uh, with a triangle there's kind of this wedge shape okay and then I'm suspecting that the nostril is up kind of high This is going to be kind of fun to pull reference after this and go, oh yeah, I was wrong about basically everything, my assumptions. See, that's more like bird-like there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this lower jaw just kind of tiny. Almost have it dissolve, you know, dissolve into the neck there. What a terrible turtle, Eric. What are you, what are you, what are you doing here? All right, we might have to pull some reference. Get us a real turtle. I don't know, something in me tells me. Take this monstrosity as far as possible before you uh, before you do what you probably should have done from the onset. 
You ever feel that way? I think that eye's too high, maybe. Also, it'd be interesting to see how turtles, uh, how their eyes are set, if they're more predatorial or not. You know, there's like a, um, like birds of prey, you can see they, uh, their eyes are both facing forward, you know, like this. They don't get you. And then dumb birds that are about to get eaten. Their eyes are like off to the side like that. Like, hey, what's over there? What's over there? They're not like staring something down for a meal. Okay, so anyway, turns out those are birds and these are turtles, um, but uh, that principle is kind of interesting for some more aggressive predatory creatures. Um, but sometimes things that we consider to be like these innocent, non-aggressive animals, uh, they can be predatory towards something else, you know. See that nose there. Something like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Let's find some, let's find some, uh, reference. So I'm looking at the chat, Ninja Turtle. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's it exactly. Uh, SF Operator Turtle or Tank Driver Turtle. Actually, that's a good idea. Tank Driver Turtle. Like, uh, get the goggles. Hmm. Trying to get that, you know, reflective glass to get a nice read. There. Again, you know, reference. Turns out there is a way.
actually think the angle too. Get that more. I'm going to have to look at some turtles. How many times is this guy going to say that? Until he just does it. Turtles have his lip thing, right? Okay. Okay, let's pull some reference. Let's do it. We need a turtle and tortoise, I think is the other one we'll need. Turtle and tour chase tortoise. Okay. All right. Whoa. Okay. Everything you thought you knew. Okay, cool. I think we got a couple of a couple of good ones to work from. So, oh, let me zoom in so we're Super off on this, but it wasn't great. Okay. smooth arc there.
uh, I think we need to reset this angle on the, you know, this eye here. They're one of those things where I feel like it's probably really easy to see. You know, you're watching somebody do this. Um, I can just imagine, you know, watching someone else's live stream. Cause they're you know, bringing a, a turtle a tank driver head together and thinking, oh, no, you got to do this. You, gotta, you know, I can see it, you know, but like when you're actually um, taking the brush strokes and testing it out some part of it's kind of some conscious like you're not really you're not really in that analytical phase that you can be as you're uh, watching and this is not this is not an excuse maybe it's a little just a little excuse but um, I just think I don't you always tend to I tend to um, watch other people work and go, oh, just just do that, just do, just make this little adjustment, you know, or whatever. Um, but you're seeing things, seeing things through a different lens, you know. This looks like it's more recessed than it should be. It might be the shape of that, you know, shadow that's throwing all that off there but you're looking at it and you're thinking you're saying Eric I don't see it I don't know what you're talking about right now what is this guy talking about turtles and lenses and in the world. Does he need to have like a hat, helmet, something. He's driving his tank, right? So he's either, he's going to be like coming out of the hatch. 
Right, so he's got his hands here popping out. We'll put the hatch behind him right like that. And turtles turtle hands, huh? You know you're too much of a Star Wars fan when you think, what do turtles look like? They look kind of like Yoda. Oh, okay, yeah. Got it. This guy needs to get out more. He's popping out of the hatch. All right, we'll um, we'll go ahead and move these other dudes over because we're really affecting the way that we're thinking about this drawing because of how how close in it is to the other one. So I'll be cognizant of that and give them all some space here. I guess we could correct some of these other turtles too. Um, so I'm going to grab some coffee and I'm looking at the coffee at 10 o'clock at night. What's wrong with this guy? All right, and I'm looking at the chat right now. Um, we've got Adonis in the chat. Hey, we got uh, Sir Monk 89. Is that um, Nate? I mean, he looks like he could be skydiving. Turtle going skydiving. I was just thinking a Jedi tortoise. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Jedi tortoise. Let's get... I'm going to um, pull up the reference again. Have a... Let's see what we need to do. I like this pose. This guy here is kind of interesting. Um, we're going to see how much we correction we have to do to get this to look like an actual turtle here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's actually, okay, I, I want to be careful not to say that it's not that bad, but it's really not that bad. It's bad. It's bad. You know, it's it, it's very puppy-like, but um, in terms of basic structure, not super, not super bad. Getting more puppy-like. It's gonna get more puppy-like before it gets more turtle-like. Just warning you. Actually, it's bordering on rat skeleton right now so I think we're getting to neither land let's uh, go here to in Just gonna have to trust me on this one.
skeleton turtle puppy monstrosity. Whew. Don't you know Halloween's already over? We don't need this kind of emotional, psychological turmoil. Monsters. What not. Flatten this head out a bit here. There we go. Raise that eye up there. Oh, excuse me. Goodness, how inappropriate. This nose is just a little more stubby than it is. And this whole thing coming up and down there. Go up, down. So there's this is like the lower lip right there. I think it'll be fun to kind of do these fat rolls and stuff on this this guy all right and we'll bring in some just texture you know light that would be grazing that surface there This kind of looks like uh, the prophets from uh, Halo, you know. Get a little bit of that going on. some shadows to these. Of course, the more it rounds the form, the more they, um, you know, the longer shadow it casts on the form. And then as we get near the top, it's just going to be just a little, little lip there. Um, let's see, this thing, actually let me uh, uh, revisit the chat here, just for a second. Um, let me just get to a decent stopping point with what I'm doing here, and then we'll hop on over to that.
Okay, let's have a look at the chat. <clears throat> uh, guest right, been picking up the pencil and charcoal and trying to get the process. Awesome. Yeah, um, charcoal's great. Charcoal's an awesome medium. Uh, it's also good in that, like, you can manipulate it a little bit, but when, you know, once you put that mark down, you can't um, can't ever go back to pure white unless you're using vine charcoal. Which, if you haven't, I mean, not to uh, give you a list of things to buy or whatever, you know. But um, when I was doing charcoal, uh, I haven't done it in years, but um, the uh, the process that I would use is is a vine charcoal which is a charcoal that just really doesn't take it doesn't stick to the surface um, so it kind of rests on top you can kind of smudge it in you can erase it out without um, really compromising your paper of course the the heavier the paper you go with um, the uh, kind of the more uh, working it can take erasing it out you know if you're too aggressive would be um, would kind of eat away at the tooth of the paper so um, you know, adding your your charcoal strokes later, uh, they might not take quite as well. But anyway, um, yeah, if you start with that vine charcoal, and you get your base down, and then you can come in and just kind of gradually work your way up with a heavier and heavier um, uh, uh, concentrations of, of charcoal. I loved working on charcoal. It was it was great. I think it's a great way to learn because you're thinking graphically, you know, lights and darks. Um, you're thinking um, a little more. You're planning a little more because you're when you put that stroke down, that's what you've got, right? Um, kind of like ink, you know. You you have to live with your decisions, and uh, that's a that's a beautiful thing, actually, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Glad to hear that. Do you have them? Uh, do you have them out right now? I'm going to start bringing in uh, just a. I, it's probably too early to do this, but I'm just going to start to uh, give these things some um, these kind of swirly shapes to them so they're not just these linear you know, bumps but they they've got this texture to them and maybe I should start to uh, square them off as they get in uh, in contact with each other to uh, adjust this a little bit. So one of the things that I, I want to um, bear in mind here, so I'm, I'm bringing in these strokes that are kind of going across the form that's going to help um, bring out the, the shape there. So this is just one big mass of light. And so if I, you know, you could either cut in a shadow, but then you've got this, you're implying that's a much harder, harsher form. Um, you can kind of bring the pencil across that form, establish that curve. You just got to be careful that, you know, I, I, could, I could go way too far with this. The nice thing with turtles, though, is that, um, you know, they're so bumpy and wrinkly and textural and stuff that you can get away with a lot. Or at least I think I can get away with a lot. 
I'm not, I don't paint turtles very often, but it seems like you could. Um, seems like you could uh, just kind of go nuts with the, the texture and the, and the wrinkling and all that kind of stuff and still come out on top. Okay, I'm probably going too far with this one. Um, next one. This guy. There's also other, you know, other kind of turtle head shapes that might be interesting to work work on. Um, just checking back at the chat, said not at the moment, just a cheap set from Walmart, compressed charcoal, pencil set, and two small blocks on all on an all-purpose sketch paper. Yeah, I mean that's that's a great way to start. I mean I I I mentioned the vine charcoal. I don't always use it, um, or didn't always use it when I. I admitted that I haven't <laughs> I haven't used charcoal in a while, um, but back when I was drawing in charcoal often enough, it's a good way to block in and start and just kind of like give yourself a scaffold, you know, a, a road map before you start putting in your uh, final marks. Um, but it's not necessary, uh, and a, a similar approach would just be to have a very light touch with a compressed charcoal. Um, there's different kinds. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at them, so I don't, you know, I don't remember the the grading or whatever. But um, if, to my recollection, generally the higher the number, that means the um, higher the concentration of charcoal. Um, some sometimes they'll add like a um, like a clay or something like a. Um, not much of it, but it's enough to change the feel of it so that it doesn't just disintegrate in your hand. Um, and so generally the firmer kind of pencils, both graphite and I believe charcoal falls under the same rule set. Um, the firmer it is, the more of that kind of um, uh, binding medium is in there. And that's what kind of keeps it together and keeps the consistent consistency that um, uh, that each kind of grade represents. And so anyway, that that consistency is uh, it's manufactured. To, you know, it's it's how you how each individual artist kind of prefers um, the feel, of how much of the pigment goes out on the paper when you take a stroke how hard you need to press to get that effect, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you can also, uh, it's not just feel and personal preference. You can, you can leverage that to, um, uh, to kind of block something in, start a little soft. Um, you know, you can't really go as dark with like an HB or like a, um, a uh, lower number um, that would be m you know more binding material and less of the pigmentation you know charcoal or graphite depending on whatever you're using um, so there's less pigmentation in it so you just you're just not going to get as dark with that pencil and then you work your way darker um, it's been a while so I'm I'm a little reluctant to like just jump in with, uh, oh yeah, I think you could do you know X Y Z, you know whatever, whatever I say here, um, be prepared to destroy a, a drawing and waste some paper, <laughs> you know uh, testing, proving whether or not my uh, statements are true, um, but uh, I'm pretty sure you could take that and. Uh, softly feather in your your underdrawing and then you can just smudge it basically if you just have a piece of leather or something 
Um, that's that's what I've used for the longest time. Um, just like a a, a smooth. Um, I forgot what the the term was. It was like it was a French French word. I'm gonna butcher it if I say it. But anyway, um, basically a smooth kind of cloth that you can act as a partly like a spudger, like you're um, blending it into the paper, getting it deep into the, the recesses of the of the um, of the tooth, the texture of the paper, but you're also um, pulling some material out and diminishing the, the concentration of it, right? You're kind of diffusing it. And so that might be a way to do that. You know, you draw lightly and then you kind of just smudge it in there. You know, again, the only real problem with that is you just can't ever get back to a pure white, um, you know, with that method. Paper, the paper does matter. Um, you know, this is one of these things where I I definitely feel like art is more in the principles than in the theory. That if you um, have any medium, you know, a, a stick in the mud, um, or you know, found objects or found pigmentation or whatever, um, you'll arrange things with the same kind of logic uh, and the same kind of visual sensibility. So the medium itself is more just a matter of like approach. It may have some capabilities that, that others don't. I mean, I'm not, not discounting that, but... Um, Generally speaking, you know, the, the, the art is in the creation and in the, and the decisions that you make. And so I don't want to ever really give the impression that, like, you've got to have X, Y, and Z to be a successful artist or, to, or you know, you're doing it wrong or whatever you know what I mean um, though so that's the that's the I don't really even want to call that a caveat like I feel like that's just a true um, a true statement that I want to make sure we launch off with that basis however you know when you're dealing with charcoal like I said you, you know you you get that charcoal into the into the paper and you, you're never really going to get it out and the uh, the paper matters generally the the um, thicker the paper and the and the heavier the tooth you know the more you're going to be able to to um, to work with that um, because it's just it's the, the tooth is basically just the, the texture the how thick or how how um, how deep the grooves are in the, you know in the in the textural pattern and you'll have different patterns there's just different types of paper um, I'm not too versed on the on the medium to just rattle them off the top of my head um, so you know you'd have to do a little bit of research there. Um, But you know, you you would basically have these different different types of um, textural patterns or weaves, and uh, you know the charcoal is gonna it, that basically it's gonna it's it's gonna dig into the charcoal. It's like um, <clears throat> if you've ever worked with pastels, you can do them right on sandpaper. It's actually just a, a awesome way to work. <laughs> like it, it's got a great feel. Um, and you can buy um, a kind of an art artist grade sandpaper that's uh, 
you know, just these big full sheets so you can do these, you know, larger images and stuff. Um, but, you know, that's, it, th that's the concept, basically, is that your paper is, um, is uh, digging that material off your pencil, you know, even though it feels like you're doing the opposite, right? You're, sometimes it feels like you're carving into the paper, at least if you, if you draw or paint like I do it way too heavy of a of a touch like I'm sometimes I feel like I'm engraving um, a little side note there that actually when I I did some uh, sculptural work in stone and that was just that was so fun and I think it, it partly was that that feeling of like oh I'm not you know it's it's not wrong for me to to um, feel like I'm digging into this material and and um, engraving it, you know, because that's actually literally what I'm doing. Whereas with the paper, I always have a certain level of guilt that I'm like handling this way too heavily and too, you know, I don't have that finesse. I'm, I'm uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay. I have talked in circles about paper and uh, the benefits of it, even though you don't need it. <laughs> you don't need to have uh, special materials or whatever. Um, but, but since you are since you are diving into this and playing with it, that is information that I, I think would be really important for you to have, so you know your options. You know that. You might be able to try something else and get a totally different feel and be happy with that. Um, and it, it would m maybe feel a little more natural to the way you um, kind of the eye, eye hand coordination type of thing, or, or it, it's, it's the expectation of like when I take this stroke this way, um, you know, pushing this hard, you would kind of expect something to happen. And, Sometimes you don't get that expected result, and so kind of changing, changing the medium can alleviate some of that uh, kind of built-in frustration. It can also add its own <laughs> level of frustration, but anyway, I will cease the uh, unsolicited... rant on papers uh, I'm looking at the chat blending sticks and brushes have uh, been really fun with it also removing color or layers with the eraser I plan to get some proper paper when I'm more prepared for it yeah um, actually that being said <laughs> jumping back into paper types um, it's really common to have two grades of paper at least so like you've got like your your quote unquote proper paper and then you've got newsprint and newsprint is just literally uh you know the recycled paper that would be used for a newspaper um and so you often artists will practice on newsprint they'll do all their kind of daily warm-ups that just to get the arm moving and you know kind of get the get the flow going and then they'll move over to the the nicer paper and it's always, you know, it's a joke that, you know, your, your best drawings are on the newsprint. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right there. That's, I mean, that's, uh, that's a good practice. Uh, this paper is also, uh, also been getting some pen, but uh, mostly graphite right now. I'm noticing the benefits here of digital erasing to clean the background. Um, and I said, I like the black and white stuff. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love the kind of like, you're chiseling away, adding in, um, especially when you're kind of thinking about form, light and shadow, uh, you know, falling on a form, um, you know, then you can, you can, uh, you can block in a shadow and then you can cut away from it and kind of reveal, you know, maybe little textures of where lights just hitting, just able to hit, you know, these little little pieces here and there you know it's um, it's great if 
Felt like I was going somewhere with that, but I guess not. Keeping it to uh, grayscale, black and white, that's, that's another thing that's pretty often recommended. Um, I have mixed feelings on that uh, as far as recommending it one way or the other. And um, the pros and cons of that would be you're simplifying what you're seeing. Uh, so I would definitely recommend it when as you're learning and developing your eye and also developing that eye hand coordination you know because um, because you're not juggling all these different factors uh, you know if you're dealing with hue hue and saturation you know it, to bring in colors and it's, it's not just hue and saturation, it's also just the relationship between things. That's really, I would say, the correct concept is when you're drawing or painting, it's the relationships. It's the relationships between light and dark. It's the relationships between um, edges of, of hard and soft. It's the um, relationships of the shapes, um, you know, rounded you know, curves versus straight lines and corners um, it's the um, you know, not just the not just those edge choices but the the shapes themselves do they relate to each other you know does this shape here relate to the one over here and the one back here um, you know these little swirly things for on the back of the shell they kind of relate to each other you know so it's, these are all relationships and all of those relationships there that I mentioned are, are all happening in, in grayscale, in black and white. And so you're balancing those things out, and that's um, that's the art. You're, you're using those, well, that's the art in terms of um, technically what's happening on the paper and what you're doing visually. Uh, so that's already enough to balance as it is. And when you introduce color, the relationships, uh, they become more complicated. It's not just light and dark and color, it's the relationships between hues, it's the relationships between you know, high saturation and low saturation, it's the relationships in hues and saturation um, as they go up and down the value scale. So if they're brighter, they're darker, um, there's a different effect on um, on those colors and how we perceive them. Right? And, you know, I might be alluding to things that I don't really quite have time or, you know, I'm not actually working on those kind of things right now to be able to explain it super well. But all that, all that to say that the um, complexity of what you're balancing, those relationships that you're balancing, they just become way more complex. I mean, you could think about it like um, working on a project by yourself versus working on a project in a team, right? It's like balancing what everyone is doing and how their contributions add up to the whole um, is a is a skill set in and of itself, right? And so, the more complicated you make that. Um, you know, there's more potential. You can you can go farther with it, but um, there's also just potential for catastrophe and disappointment and frustration um, if if uh, if it becomes too burdensome. Okay, so anyway, that's a long way to say that hey, you keep it simple by working in black and white, um, and keep it easy on yourself and, and you can uh, you can learn a lot from that now where I would steer away from that is that understanding the complexity of those relationships can only really come through practice 
So at some point, you've got to get past the, uh, you know, I only work in black and white. Well, if, if you want to. If you, certainly, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to take this the direction that I'm saying you, uh, that I took it, right? But um, if color is something you want to employ, then at some point you have to take the step um, to, to take on that complexity and that difficulty. And I don't want to pump it up as like, oh, it's, just, it's super hard or whatever, you know. It's not, you know, you, you, it just takes practice and attention and um, there are lots of, lots of teachers and guides out there that um, have plenty to say on the topic that it's really helpful. Um, so it's not, it's not an insurmountable task, it's just um, makes it easier on you, I guess. One other thing that I would add to that, and this is just from my experience, and that is that um, I, I feel like I learned a lot about color, and a lot about the relationships um, in a painting by deciding to paint directly, to paint colors directly. You know, I think part of what got me in that mode of thinking was... Um, that going from black and white to color, you know, so if you're, if you're just doing a black and white image, that's great. I, I love uh, charcoal images, black and white drawings, etc. Um, grayscale. But if you're planning to take that image and then bring color on top of it, um, like I said, those relationships, like the color that you might have been thinking, for example, let's say you're thinking something's yellow, versus something is blue, um, once you start to introduce those colors, you know, blue is going to make the whole thing darker. Yellow, it's like you might already be too dark in that region for it to really be yellow um, because it would have, it would pick up light in a different different way. So even in the shadow, it might be lighter than you drew it in pencil, right? Or in charcoal. Um, and so getting those value relationships dialed into work with color it, it's not always uh, it doesn't always work to go from just grayscale and then add color on top of it even digitally there's more kind of more finessing you have to do to, to make sure that the value corresponds to um, the, the way that you would perceive that hue anyway that's a whole other thing um, but that was the thing that drove me to just paint directly. And that is, I see this color, I'm gonna select a color over here, lay an opaque dab of that digital paint down and see if I matched it, right? Instead of trying to build up into it. And so I was trying to develop my color sense that way. I think that was a good thing. So circling back around to what I was saying, um, I think that I grew a lot in my color sense that way and in my painting that way. However, I think the one thing that I wish that I had spent more time on is just this, uh, the, the graphic read of something, just black and white. Do the shapes make sense? Does it, does it feel, um, does it feel right? You know, it, it, when I look at this, does that form read correctly? Does it read like it's in space? Um, is it interesting? You know, even if it seems correct, is it even something I want to look at? <laughs> right? Um, so that's something that, in that regard... I do think it probably would have benefited me to have spent a little more time or maybe a lot more time early on um, just in grayscale to get to, to really solidify those foundational skills. 
that being said, you know, I'm kind of doing it now, right? Like, um, it's, it's not like that ship has sailed, you know, I missed the boat and now, uh, I can never, um, work on my graphic composition. It's like it's, that's still an option. But, I also have the bad habit of, um, I have all these other crutches that I can lean on. Um, you know, perhaps I developed and answered some of those questions as far as design questions, you know, um, if you have a question's not the, really the, the correct term I'm going for, but like you're, you're solving problems. So if I solved those problems, um, with a different tool set when really there's a better tool for the job but I'm just you know, I'm used to used to using a hammer even though this is a screw right we can hammer it in there but it really kind of defeats the purpose <laughs> you know That neck is way too long. Hmm. What do we want to do with you? I'll get back to the chat here in just a second. Uh, I think it's kind of an abstractness to black and white, cartoonish or realism. The colors and rest is for the observer to fill in and can make it a bit personal, kind of like a sculpture left in its raw material yeah yeah it's interesting um, a lot of those Roman Roman sculptures um, were painted and the paint didn't survive but we think of them as um, you know it's got this classic look to it it's that classic marble uh, Greco-Roman style sculpture and uh, I think if we saw them painted I'd like just about hurl you know <laughs> like they're yeah it's a it's a completely different um, aesthetic it's interesting it's one of those interesting things right like think it would be it'd be interesting to hear a conversation between an artist of antiquity and an artist today you know even seeing oil paintings and they're you know what we consider kind of classic sepia tone you know um, a lot of that's just because the colors faded over time you know and they just have this look of just like uh, homogenous um, analogous uh, color palette and it's, I think it's beautiful um, but that's not necessarily how they were originally painted sorry this has turned into a, an episode of um Eric gives a faint recollection of art history <laughs> uh, so that so that I can feel smart. I definitely have that problem. Like, ooh, here, I, I know the answer to that. Let me, let me just say, because I, because I remember, and, uh, it, first of all, it may not be correct, and secondly, it may not be helpful. And now, a message from... 
Random fact, man. So I don't know if we'll get to it with these, but one of the things uh, with doing this digitally is that we can start with this this black and white and then come back bring in some tones you know some mid tones and and uh, and we've left a little room for ourselves so we can we could push in some highlights if we if we wanted to to work here thinking about this as like the this is the rim of the hatch is popping out of here so we got to show you know that this is in full light right he's popping out he's got this uh, he's got the uh, hatch still up above him so it's kind of casting a shadow on him and we just need these shapes to kind of line up so that that clearly goes into the into the hatch there so he's not like his shell isn't larger than the hole that he's popping out of that would seem to make sense um, rivets as positive um, that is white um, you know shapes and so now we're reversing that we're bringing in the shadows let's see if we don't screw it up. <laughs> That's probably good enough for that guy. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll come back. I say that, that's my, that's my mantra. All right, we'll get more turtles to turtleify. Might need to speed this up a little bit because I am gonna run out of steam. Again with uh, now let's see if we can get some different shapes. You know, we want it to be turtly, but we also want to have some fun, make it interesting. Uh, 
something like that. All that talk about paper and black and white and charcoal. And then now I've got nothing to say. Said it all, I guess. Go with a larger brush. If we want to go quicker, then we've got to go larger. Cover more real estate. feathers or something. He asked politely, so I was obliged. Cast that shadow there. Bring this up. This is going to be closer. If you need some shoes, some kicks. As the cool kids are saying. Wow, turtle. Nice kicks. Thank you, homie. Still working on it. Okay, let's, you know. Getting the lingo down. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Needs another leg. That's it. Just there in the background. We're gonna do one here, like a another foot. Okay, this long-legged one. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we should start to echo that, um, you know, the more simplified design here in the uh, form of the shell. Almost starts to read like a camel or a horse. We're gonna have to move some things around. Give us some space. I have this sense that uh, this is going to have to be more central if it's going to um, it's going to be that tall. we've made. All right, so let's maybe bring him up there. These guys down here. This guy. Mr. Air Jordan's over there. This guy. Doot, doot.
Watch those. Uh, I kind of liked them the other way. Just kind of have this zigzag, whoosh, whoosh, you know. So you're kind of working through the the piece, the piece, the page. We shall say. Okay, that's way less interesting now that I've uh, flipped it. another one of those little tricks that I, I really uh, should do a whole lot more than I do and that is you flip the canvas or if you're working um, traditionally you look at it in a mirror and um, it kind of forces your brain to reassess and, and like as if you're looking at it again for the first time and uh, a lot of errors become clear Man, how much can one person stress over just where the drawings are on the page? That's some good coffee. And way too late. Alright, let's see what we want to do with this guy. So, I'm going to hold control here move this so forward kind of gives it this momentum bringing it over here to the right kind of makes it more solid um, you know more of a, a slow stance maybe we'll uh, we'll do a couple different versions
we'll start painting these in. We're looking we're underneath. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can actually uh, see what's going on here. I, I do kind of need to see <clears throat> um, some of this stuff around the uh, the part that I'm working on here so that it um, fits still in the same kind of space as the rest of it. You don't want to get isolated on this part of the painting and then lose track of everything else. chat here uh, maybe give the tall one some motion war of war of worlds turtles yeah basically that's uh, I, uh, I like these guys being these big lumbering monsters of doom gotta have that doom I have a painting on my wall. It's actually at the. Um, it's on the staircase, you know, looking across from you as you come down. That is uh, in this theme. Crazy as that may be. <clears throat> like I said, I, I have a, I've kind of played with this idea before. And uh, I don't know. I just I, I I think it's fun. So I keep coming back to it. It is one of those things that every time I look at that painting, though, I think about what I would do differently. Part of the curse, I guess. The nice thing is, you keep on painting. Just paint another one. Paint some more. The more, the merrier.
Mm. I think I do want this shadow deeper here. Maybe have this kind of tuck in back behind, come back out there. My uh, my turtle anat anatomy is uh, perhaps based too heavily upon Super Mario. more like how the parts would fit you know in a functional game or design application than how they actually fit in the actual real life design application <clears throat> all right I'm gonna get I'm gonna go a little heavier on the shadows here because we're kind of looking up at it, right? So that uh, I should probably bring this. Shape in there, have some of these cast shadows. Maybe have this just get lost up here, you know, just have that be completely dark. Don't know if I want to lose this edge or find it, right? If we just kind of highlight that edge there versus um, having it completely lost. I actually think I prefer it as a lost edge. And then we'll bring some of these shadows in. Kind of started this idea of having like a knee there, so maybe we'll, we'll bend this and we'll actually kind of taper this down so it does feel more like a like a human thigh. You know, so it's like more massive up here. one in the background I'm just gonna kind of push that into obscurity so it's not maybe that'll be a little more abstract what in the world I have nothing to say it is art you're just gonna have to Bring your own interpretation. Even if it's this guy's crazy. Yeah, let's make this one into like a camel, with like a proper, you know, multiple. Turtly camel humps up there. Oh, I had 
these just cast shadows all the way down. And I should probably not be afraid to do that on some of these other ones. You know, I wanted to maintain this edge here. Um, <clears throat> but, come on. I'm crying out loud. What's the big deal? Maintaining edges. Break the edge. Okay, this guy, what do we want to do? I'm just, actually, I'm just going to go in with the smudge brush and just going to move fast with this. And I should just break up that form enough. We can have some material to play with. So make these not so linear. You know, you're kind of kind of looking at them from the side. Why? Why would we be doing that? Makes no sense. Just give them a little, give them a little shape. turtle right here. Grumpy. Bad mood. Bad mood turtle. is going on in there. Have this form change there.
Hmm. I'm not sure, you know, I had something, I had this kind of, uh, counter change going on here, and then I got rid of it, and then I decided that I liked it, and then I got rid of it again. Should probably just decide what I'm doing, huh? Sometimes you gotta see it. You gotta see it to know. <laughs> yeah, staying in the lines is so kindergarten. You know, there is there is this childish joy to me for just uh, throwing some loose marks outside of the silhouette. You know, there's something about that look that I think just brings this energy. Um, to a design. And so I think you're right. Speaking of which, I've been wanting to put this like kind of hair rim light on this guy here. Like he's got this hair blown in the wind there. This fella right here. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do with you? We're gonna light these shoes up.
they should be on the same same plane as these guys though I suppose shorts uh, by the same plane I mean the the feet here should land such that they appear to be on the same ground plane sorry I neglected to Clarify. I might bring this one a little lower. So it's coming towards us in space more than the other one. And I might simplify that. Edge there. Give this one a little more extreme perspective. horns any justice here or do I just need to get rid of them maybe it's a hat instead all of the cool kids have their backwards baseball caps
let's see what we want to do with this shape here. Do we want to keep it round like that? in the tails, yeah. Um, I'm still, I'm still looking at this shape and thinking, thinking about what I want to do with it. You know, if it's too linear. I think I want to just smooth it out. Let's see, we got this shape. So we want to echo that shape, maybe. I do like the um, the uh, this midtone thing here, where we got to bring this shape in, or these lines rather, to show the shapes of the uh, shell. turtle person to come in and say, you know, those those lines really aren't arbitrary, you know, they're a turtle. There's a certain growth pattern and this really is offensive to turtles everywhere, but you wouldn't take the time to research that. starting to feel that feeling when you're getting tired of 
probably approaching the end. I know we never never really got the color or any half toning or not half toning, but you know, bringing in the mid tones. Actually, let's do that. We'll go, we'll go in, we'll do darker color. Then we'll go with a soft brush and we'll just start to start to brush some of these things here. We want these darker as they come forward. So there's kind of a soft shadow over them. We'll soften that. These rounded forms around the, the neck. The bounce light needs to be Softer, maybe soften this as it recedes in space. All that bounce light needs to be. Softened up. And so with this being its own layer, we can just kind of move around each one. So we're just trying to reserve <clears throat> some of the brightest points for the, the areas we want to showcase. Right, so if we're showcasing this, these little humps up here, and probably the head, I think we'll want to showcase. So we're going to have all of this kind of diminish. We could even cast a shadow. On that, that would, you know, give you this interesting form to follow. You know, so if this has a shadow cast on it like that. And then that could carry out over into this area. Alright, 
Let's zoom out a little bit here. Bring these bounce lights down. Back in here. Diminish all that. Have this. Fade is it. Moves down across the form. And into the background. Hmm, not sure exactly how I want to handle this. I want to round this form out here, but I don't want to completely lose the, uh, lose the depth, you know, by pushing all of that gray, all that gray back. But we'll see what happens here. Let me push these back in space. Maybe cast this shadow on his on that shell back there. I don't know. 
I think I want to give that more of a shape, you know, so harder edge. I don't know if that's better to have a harder edge or not. I mean, given that, you know, we're kind of finessing this, I, I do want to to introduce some gradients that you know, lead, lead the eye around, but um, if we're thinking about this spatially, you know, we're adding in these shadows from this back hatch. It gives it a uh, gives it the sense that there's, you know, that's actually casting a shadow there. Um, then that would be a then that would be a hard shadow, right? Like that. Maybe we need to bring it down here. I mean, we haven't fully established, you know, a true uh, direction for the light source. If we do this, then we kind of need to bring it down. there that's not bad that's not too bad at all here we bring some light back in here back on that neck Okay. Do a few more of these and then we'll call it. So we're softening these edges where the light turns the form. The, the, the form turns and so the light doesn't catch so perfectly. Um, Gonna show those being a little more rounded. As opposed to a cast shadow, which just completely blocks the light.
was playing with casting that shadow there to see if um, see if the form will still read but if it uh, makes it more interesting I think I kind of want to pull a little bit out and then work it back in let me zoom in on that so we can see what's going on there so I erased away at that it wasn't quite clean enough so I'm going to Maybe I'll just do the smudge. I'll bring in some lighter value there. And then we'll blend that in. Trying to get that light cast to be less linear across the form, you know, so it's we're not just going left to right, but we're kind of receding into space. Okay, maybe we're <clears throat> just going a little bit too heavy on that guy. I think we need to take a deep breath, keep having fun, and just keeping it light. And not getting too, not get too fussy with these. Another thing to consider is local value. So if we want like the skin to be darker than the shell, for example, or vice versa, that would help uh, clarify the the read a little bit.
All right, what do we got? One more to go. Do we want to clarify this? Go a more neutral. Right, right, right. This guy here. Big lumbering. Giant turtle. Do we want to reverse that so it's brighter at the bottom and then we bring it up to dark at the top? It's like a film noir turtle.
Hmm. Yeah, I think I just want to just gently grade this over and then have it tucked back in there. All right. Um, hmm. Well, I think this is probably about the right time to call it on this. I think this head, much as I like it, could go in a shadow. Might be more fun that way. It'd be interesting to see where we're at and you know, we can open up the curves if we, we can go all the way down to black we don't have any white I don't think we I don't think we need to push it you know it would just give us a little more contrast um, in the brights but I think what we could do see it's not not giving us all that much but what we could do is we could um, Give us a color balance, curves, all that good stuff. You know, curves would be decent if we if we lock in our light and we lock in our darker value. And then it's just a matter of deciding whether these mids go up or down. Yeah, I'm not sure that it really gives us, giving us too much there. A little bit. Uh, now let's go to color balance.
I'll set this to uh, color. Yeah, it just it does too much to the uh, to the value in the scene. Though I don't know that we really need it. Um, you know the the darks here. You know I think we just need it right in that mid tone like that. Maybe we eliminate the the brightest values as well. Somewhere in there. We could also play with this background too. I'm gonna go all the way to black. Bring it into the mids. Woo! That's just pushing it just ever so slightly darker. And I'm gonna I'm gonna Try to fade that in so that a lot of these, you get these light values here, darks and lights that I, I kind of want them to just blend in a little more. They're close to our, um, they're close to our background value, but just not quite. See, on one hand, I I don't like it being darker, but I do like a lot of those things being simplified. And I don't really feel like going in and doing the work of, you know, erasing all that out. I suppose I could do like a lighter color layer. Well, anyway, we're not going to do it. But Another time. You know, we're never done until we do that overlay. So, it must be done. There's our scaffold brush from a couple weeks ago. Um, and I think I'm going to bring this in kind of warm. some sunlight right there.
See, I told you it wasn't so straightforward to add color to black and white. Okay. I think we'll go with something a little different here. Maybe more yellow, yellow green, ochre. A little too saturated in there. Stripes or something. And uh, I want more of a, almost like a burnt, burnt umber kind of shell. I might bring this into the eye as well. Looking at the chat here, he needs that noir detective hat. I'm curious what your versions of Looney Tunes or Disney characters would be. Um, I have no idea. No idea. I can't say that I've ever really explored that. Uh, there are some kind of character worlds that like it just uh, I guess I've just kind of let them be what they are like I've never I shouldn't say never but uh, the desire to kind of do my own riff on some things it's pretty limited to certain genres you know you know maybe Star Wars is one that I've played with a little bit um, 
know, what that might be like to what my take on it would be, you know. Um, this I I want that catch light to be a different different color. Let me zoom in on this. Maybe we'll bring the little limey things, make them a little cleaner. to uh, push some of these back, put a little, maybe not quite that dark, but bring in some contrasting tones there. Here, there, and everywhere. shadow for the hair Okay, going too far.
this was supposed to be a minor change. Yeah. Just to maybe nudge it one direction or the other. But I like the texture. I don't really I don't like it being darker necessarily. This is okay, having the light and dark there. Um, you know, I'm just going to do one more thing here. Let's do, I guess we'll just do normal. I'm going to grab that background color and I'm just going to feather some of this in. So, some of these things will disappear into the background. Yeah, I think the only thing, uh, probably not the only thing, but the main thing that I don't really like is right in here. I think I just want that to be a subtler effect, and so I'm just going to uh, mask it out softly. the same thing here like I'm not really into this um, I like the blue um, but the gold is definitely a little too heavy in there so I'm gonna mask that out a bit
balance. Alright, we'll see what that does. And then I might just bring the hue, just bring the saturation down in the, uh, in just in the shadows. And hopefully we don't crash Photoshop doing this. Uh, actually, I'm just going to take this mask and adjust curves, I guess. So we need to increase the, the black. I'm really only dealing with this area over here. That was the one area that I masked out. Yeah, it's funny now that I mask it out, I'm like, hey, I actually kind of like that. I don't know what my deal is. I think it needs a like, darker color, and then you grab that, and maybe scooch it over and make it a little more red, you know, and just paint over it. Okay, maybe we go a little darker, 
feathered in in here. And those little shadow areas. This is the uh, price we pay for not establishing a solid light source. Okay. I think we're basically to the point that we need to stop. Might clean this up just as goes there. Okay, let's zoom in, see what we've got. Greensies here. There it is. So we've got a bunch of random turtley things. I guess there's really not much to say about that. They're just turtles. But hey, it was fun. It was fun to. Uh, and I just riff on the idea, play around with the, um, you know, the graphic shapes at first, though um, you know, they were pretty rough. We had to tease them out, kind of pull out what would be interesting, refine them, then uh, test our knowledge and memory of turtle anatomy, which was horrible, 
<clears throat> and uh, look that up, get that uh, back on track. And then from there, it was playing again, right? And uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I think it was fun. I, I like these uh, kind of goofy turtles and these riffs off of them. Um, it's certainly, you know, it's got a certain stylization to it. So if we were to paint these, we'd have to come back, you know, add some more... Um, Generally, depending on the style, but you probably would want to add a little more detail in the shadows um, because the shadows are just sent straight to black here in a more kind of comic uh, graphic style. Ooh. And we would be working these um, value relationships back and forth on a more kind of micro level to get the snout to kind of pop forward more and that sort of thing. That would change the style uh, completely. And actually, I kind of like the simplicity of this. But, uh, all right, that's it for tonight. Um, it was a nice, uh, lively chat tonight. And uh, interesting to talk about some different materials and that sort of thing. So, definitely appreciate that. I uh, appreciate the conversation. And, um, uh, Hope you got something, um, you know, some cool stuff done on your end uh, as you're watching and listening, playing with your own um, kind of uh, compositions and and drawings as well. So I'm going to end it here. Well, we've sufficiently made this ending awkward, <laughs> long and awkward. Uh, so I think it's a good time to stop. All right, thank you for joining in tonight, and uh, have a good night. <laughs>